Justin's here. If Justin's here, Justin, get up here. Justin, I would just asked Jay. Hey, honey, how are you? I'm hey, Carissa. Hey, Justin, how are you? Um, good. I um, I just asked Jay if he had been to a, a race before, and he said, I think I have. Been to what? A race before. You I think, think, you think, yeah, you think, think you have. Thank I've you. been to Indy. I've been to Indy. I was like, you, you probably, you probably did it the right way if you think it. you were there. Yeah. Exactly. And by that we mean he doesn't remember much of it. But you, you, you try not to forget if you're there. How are you? Oh, Justin, this is your hometown. Yeah, I've been here for uh, two years. Apparently, I'm like the only guy that's moved here in the last two years. Uh, yeah, you, and me, you and me both. And you, <laughs> you, hates she us. just moved here too. So you, yeah. you, you and the rest of the world are moving yeah. to Nashville. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I moved here in uh, June 2020. You know, when we started Track House, we started this team. We wanted it to feel different than an NASCAR team. We wanted to really be try to build a sports and entertainment brand. And, um, you know, while we had to do the race shop and everything out of Charlotte, just supply chain and people, to build a brand that transcended the sport, that, that just felt different, looked different, um, Nashville just felt like the place to do it. So three of our 130 people work here and um, sort of feels like home. So yeah, Justin, I mean, Mark, and, sorry. You, and you guys are, Trackhouse is on fire right now. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, you, guys are, it's, you guys are, I mean, for, for, for a owner early on and, and just kind of building this, I mean, you guys are just, I mean, you're winning races, you're yeah. racing, you're doing all the things. Well, I mean, what I tell people is, you know, it's not a surprise that we're winning because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made the investment and took on this project and the stress and everything like that to build anything less than what I felt really could be a winning organization. It's just happened so fast. I mean, last yeah. year was our first year, but it was, it was, we were contracted with another team. We were just learning the ropes. A lot yeah. of the people that work for the organization weren't actually our people. So this is like our first year being fully autonomous and our, in our, our first year on our own as a two car team, you know, to win three of the first 16 races. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Say that but, again, say it with your chest. but I mean, it's, you're, you, you are a racer as well. So it's yeah. not like you're, you're oblivious to like what it takes and what you're looking for. So like you went into it eyes open and knew, hey, like we need to do it. This, 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 and this yeah. is what it takes. Well, I mean, look, we have a new car this year that we've never raced before. And for, yeah. so for, the, for the first time in the series history, we're buying all of our parts and pieces from independent vendors. So we can't use engineering or money or like resources quite as much anymore. It's about the people. And you know this and you'll appreciate this, Jay. Like I said, with this car, we can actually build a sports team. Yeah. We can build a sports team where we get good people and we really invest in the culture and we have each other's backs and we get people motivated and excited and have that fighting spirit and feel like we're going as a real team. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can have success that way. And that's what this car has allowed us to do. Oh, that, I mean, that's like anything else. If you, if you everyone is, has the same, same motivation, same goal, going through the same thing, Leadership's on point. I mean, I, and Christy, you can probably talk to this, being at Fox. Like, I mean, that's probably why you stayed so long. I mean, there's a lot of, I've worked, at, now I've worked every place but CBS uh, and, and well, like NBC a little bit, but I always end up back at Fox because it's a culture and it's family and they let you be you. And if you can authentically be you, and again, to your point, at, you know, in any organization you played for, uh, if you can do that, then that takes out a lot of the stressors, right? So for those, you walk into a room and you pitch uh, track house. How are you pitching that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, what we're trying to do is be the first race team that um, we're the only race team in NASCAR that the name of it isn't related to the owner. Yeah. Ah, and so true. what, so what like we're that. doing yeah. is we're, we're building a brand, right? So what I say is that we're storytellers. We're telling great stories. Daniel Suarez, the driver of the 99, Mexican kid, moves to America, doesn't speak the language, with a dream of being a NASCAR driver. That's odds, one, that's odds one of one. to win this race, too. Yep. Him and Kurt. And, and, um, and Ross Chastain, eighth generation watermelon farmer from Florida, bootstrapped it, you know, watermelon. just tried, you know. And so, um, you know, what I say is that we're, we're a movement. Like, we're, we're a brand and we're a movement and we're storytellers. And what we want to do is we want to compel our partners, our fans, and the sport to, to really be something that compels the fans, like, like that excites the fans, and really try to build a fan base like a sports team, right? I mean, like, you know, a lot of these, these teams are the namesakes of their owners, but there's no team in the sport that's like the Yankees or like the Warriors. Where the like when Dallas people Cowboys. come and go, like, I'm a Yankees fan or I'm a Patriots fan, yeah. that's what we're trying to build. Yeah. Well, 
this is a buzzword. Everyone's a brand. What's your brand? All these different things, right? How would you or who would you equate yourself to, as you mentioned, some of those other teams? Or who would you attain? Who are you striving to be? Like, who are those those organizations? You named yeah. a couple of them, but how does which organization across all sports sort of align with your guys' philosophy? Well, I mean, you know, I think that, that I think of us more than sports, right? I mean, like, you know, Pitbull is a partner of our team, and we sponsor... Mr. Worldwide. We, yeah, we sponsor uh, Misha Tate in the UFC and James Hahn in the PGA, and we, and we do all these things. So I look at companies like Virgin. I look yeah. at companies like Disney, where... You know, they're, they're, it's a very strong brand, yep. and they set themselves up to be able to explore all kinds of opportunities. I mean, we've got, we've got things in the pipeline here in this market in Nashville to just to connect the world of, of racing and Americana and, and American culture and, and entertainment and everything. So I look at companies like that more as like, you know, media, content, sports and entertainment type companies. Well, you know, you see guys like Kurt Busch. Ty, and, and with, with everyone here even as an example of being able to have access to these athletes, it's different than other sports, right? And I mean, I've, I've worked in hockey and part of the reason I love the sport is because the guys were so down to earth, unassuming. They could be at a restaurant and someone would be like, oh, I don't even know that's Sidney Crosby, right? So when you get guys in this sport that are so willing to market the sport and push the sport, it's gotta make your job a little bit easier. Well, that's one of the great things about NASCAR is that, you know, N NASCAR w was born, NASCAR was really a blue collar sport. And it was born, it was born out of that American rebel spirit, that blue collar, um, you know, American work ethic. And, and that's something that's really um, stayed consistent as NASCAR has become a major American sport and it's gotten high tech and everything is that we are really accessible and we understand that one of the things that makes us special now in a sports and entertainment landscape that's getting very competitive, um, you know, our niche is the fact that we're really authentic and we're real and, and accessible and uh, and our drivers are, uh, you know, they, they stand behind that and they realize yep. the importance in that. And that's why I, what I love about Daniel and Ross, our two guys, I mean, they are very authentic, real guys and they'll stop and talk to anybody mm -hmm. and whether that's here, you know, or on pit road or anywhere. So um, that's one of the things I love about NASCAR because that's how I fell in love with it because my father took me to the Daytona 500 in 1995 when I was 15 years old and I, I was able to, talk to my heroes yeah just yeah, as yeah. some yeah. damn kid that you know whatever walking around and that was that's, that's awesome me. you uh i mean you're you're building an incredible brand and like you're obviously you guys are successful successful as hell i mean whenever you were driving in towards the end like did you know that you wanted to start your own team did you know like the next step that you wanted to do or was there kind of a transition period where, like hey i've got to figure out what the hell i'm going to do next I mean, I, look, I raced cars for 20 years. I'm, I'm semi-retired because yeah. it's, hard to, it's hard to actually meet a retired race car driver because it's just, it's like, you know, it's hard to walk away from it. Um, I was, I considered myself after a 20-year career as being a good race car driver, not a great race car driver. Okay. But, the, but the, my talent got me there, uh, but it didn't get me to the point that like I really dreamt of. And that was like winning in, at the top level you know, winning a Daytona 500. So I, when I got to be 36, 37 years old, I had to look myself in the mirror and ask myself, look, that dream is still very alive, but am I, am I gonna do it as a race car driver? Well, not at this age and I, and I haven't accomplished it yet. So where do I need to, what do I need to do to try to achieve that dream? And sure. that personally was the genesis of Trackhouse. I was like, I gotta get out of the car and I gotta do this on the business side because I was always just better at that than I was at the driving side. So. Um, I checked some good boxes. I won some good races. I got to yeah. race in a Daytona 500. I got to win a NASCAR race. Um, but this is, I just, I got to that moment where, where I was like, you're not going to just do this forever. Like, try to truly go do something great. Do you still get nervous on race day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I'm getting better at it. Like, yeah. my colleagues are, I don't know if their heart rates ever elevate because they've been doing this for like 15 and 20 years. But when those cars take the green flag and all fire off and you're, you're pretty wide, I'm just like, I can't, I, I still can't watch the first couple laps. I'm aside getting better from, at it though. Aside from Nashville, what's your second favorite race? Um, it's just so hard to beat the magic of the Daytona 500. Yeah. It's just, uh, when you drive in that place in February, on race more, so I raced in one Daytona 500 and a, a good friend of mine said, when you wake up on Sunday morning of the Daytona 500, Nine o'clock in the morning, eight thirty in the morning. Race doesn't start till three. It's gonna be quiet. All you're gonna hear is some generators. You're gonna see some seagulls. No one's in the grandstands yet. Just walk around. 
and soak it in, which I did. I, I, I took my golf cart and I drove around the infield. Everybody's waking up or you know, whatever. And, and, and I just took in the, th there's a gravity in the air in that moment where you're like, this is the summit of our sport. This is the pinnacle of our sport. Because four hours later, we're doing media. There's a quarter million people there. It's madness. Um, the Daytona 500 is just on another level. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all your success Thank on you. and off the track and your ability to recognize when it's better to walk away and then advance. I mean, I, I spend, I, I make a living talking to guys that played and are like, all right, we're done and then keep it moving. So let's welcome Jay Cutler to the stage. No, I'm kidding. Um, so nice to meet you, Justin. Thanks, y'all. Thank appreciate you. it.